number of challengers lining up for a chance to take on President Trump in 2020 continues to grow. A record-setting 23 Democratic hopefuls vying to become their party's nominee. The president also faces one Republican challenger, former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld. So joining us now to talk about all of this is the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee, Ronna McDaniel. Great to have you here, Ronna. Thanks for having me. Your last day in this studio. Yes, I know. It's bittersweet. We're leaving here and moving to a bigger, flashier studio with more toys. So you'll well, have to Well, congratulations. Come. I'll bring you a housewarming present at your new studio. Thank you. Studio. I'll look forward to that. Meanwhile, let's talk about your fundraising numbers. You are killing it. Let me just pull up for everybody your numbers, how you're situated versus the DNC, okay? So here are your latest numbers. You have a 15.9 million that you have fundraised in April alone, record setting. In March, it was 15.5. In February, 14.6. In January, 15.7. And that's, I mean, you know, doubling, basically, what the DNC is. What is driving your success with this? Well, the support for the president continues to be strong among small dollar donors and major donors. They recognize we're going to be up against a well-funded Democrat field. And it gives me an advantage as party chair to start getting into these battleground states early, focus on voter reg. And I will tell you, I work at this, too, as party chair. This is most of what I do is raising money to prepare for the election. So we're very pleased with our team and our success so far. Oh, it's a testament to whatever your secret sauce is for raising all of this money. Are there particular issues that are driving the fundraising? It's across the board uh, with the small dollar donors. Immigration is a huge issue. Uh, but with our major donors, they're looking at what the Democrats are proposing, this, this lurch to the left with socialism and, and some of the things that they're proposing with 70% taxes. And they're saying, you know what? We like a free market system. We don't want the government taking over uh, every decision-making process in our lives. So let's stick with what we're doing. And the economy's doing well. And they recognize that jobs are coming back. Uh, wages are up. They're seeing that, and they're saying President Trump's delivered. And so you must feel very confident. I mean, generally, I'd say 99% of the time, the, the side with the most money wins. And so you must be feeling very confident. And just let me pull up one poll. This is a recent Fox poll where Biden beats President Trump 49% to 38%. So how do you explain that those numbers? Well, I think it's early. And we've got to let the Democrat process play out. You're going to have a lot of debates with these 23 candidates. Biden's the front runner. We'll see how much they go after him. And I do think there's a little bit of a honeymoon period. We saw that with Hillary Clinton. Her favorables were very high before she got in. And then as people started betting her and looking at her record, they go, you know what, maybe not. So we'll see how that, that pans out. There's a lot of time between now and, and November. Do you worry that the restrictive Alabama abortion law, the most restrictive in the country, will hurt Republicans? I look at Alabama. It's a predominantly pro-life state. And they're saying, we want to let the Supreme Court decide. They've been very clear that they've crafted a law that will go to the Supreme Court that decides how far can states go to govern on this issue. Obviously, New York has passed a very different law that's allowed abortions up to the due date. Uh, and so Alabama represents Alabama. Uh, they don't want California dictating to them how they should legislate. And Roe v. Wade just didn't go far enough in saying, where do the states get the right to determine governance on this issue. But do you worry that there's no exception for incest or rape, that that ends up hurting Republicans? I mean, you've heard some Republicans, I'm thinking of Kevin McCarthy, um, already speaking out about their discomfort with that. Yeah, and there's Republicans on, on varying degrees of this issue. It's a very personal issue. We are the party of life. Uh, I think that this debate has been set off by a lot of things that we've seen from Democrats recently. 44 Democrats in the Senate said if uh, an abortion fails, you, you can't provide life-saving care to the child. I think most Americans would disagree with that. I think Ralph Northam, the governor of Virginia, who said, let the baby be born and then let's decide if it lives. I think most Republicans would disagree with that. I think he's explained that that was a massive but he did, misstatement. But he did say that, and, and Democrats haven't condemned that. And, and then you have the New York law that's gone so far to yeah. say on a due date, a mother can terminate the pregnancy. Sure. So I think there's I, a wide spectrum, and Roe v. Wade has not decided these issues, yes. and it's going to go back to But I mean, to I guess I'm just wondering, you as the head of the RNC, are you comfortable with saying that? I mean, there is this test case, a 12-year-old incest victim would have to carry her rapist's child. And that's agreed. I mean, I, that, I, my heart goes out to that little girl. I think uh, we are the party of life. I think there's a broad spectrum. You don't have a litmus test to be a Republican, but it's interesting that you know, Tom Perez has been on this show 10 times, 10 times since he's been chair, the head of the DNC. He's never been asked a question about whether he agrees 
with abortion on a due date. Well, it's only Republicans well, that get asked that question. I mean, so I'm why are Democrats pose the same tough question? Uh, we always get asked and, and have to qualify why we support life. Well, that's why don't Democrats this, get those? Well, I mean, I'm asking you this because it happened this week. And yeah, but he's been here it's so ten different times. And we've invited you ten times. Yeah, but t but he's been here ten times and he's never been asked a question about does he support whether a woman should be able to abort a baby on the day that it's due while she's in labor. That, I, mean, I think listen, that's extreme. But, 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 I mean, I, I think that we're getting that's off the topic. Extreme, here. I, it's but that's extreme. the Democrat but Party. It is not the Democratic Party. They're not talking on this about Alabama it on the due date. I mean, law. Four days. Alabama yes. is different than California. Their voters can make a determination. Understood. Do we want? But I mean, I guess I'm just asking you: Are you comfortable with no exception? Listen, personally, I would have the exceptions. That's my personal belief. But we are a party that is a broad tent. You have, we have, uh, if you agree with us 80% of the time, I want you to be a Republican. We don't have a litmus test as to whether you can belong to our party, but we are the party of life. Uh, however, we have senators like Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski and governors in di on different sides of that. Tom Perez, the head of the DNC, has yeah. said, if you are pro-life, you cannot be a Democrat. We will not support you. Okay, moving on to tariffs. Um, as you know, there are some people who voted for President Trump who are farmers and who say that his tariffs now are hurting them. Here is, I'll just play for you, one Ohio farmer who explains the effect that it's had on him. Listen to this. We're in a free fall out here in agriculture. Um, we've seen 30% decrease in prices of soybeans. With the geopolitical uh, turmoil that the president has thrown into the mix over the last year, uh, the markets just don't have anywhere to go. You worry about losing those voters. I think the president has done the right thing in standing up to China. I think it's been too long that our country has allowed China to uh, impose $500 billion in tariffs on our country uh, or allow a $500 billion trade deficit with our country and not allowed our products into their country on top of stealing intellectual property. Chuck Schumer agrees with the president. This is one place where Democrats and Republicans do agree. If we do not stand up to China right now, when we have a booming economy, when we're in a position of strength, we are going to allow them to continue to take advantage of our intellectual property and our farmers and our manufacturing, and, uh, yeah. and we will never have an opportunity to negotiate. It has been unfair what China has done to the United States of America. I'm proud of our president for standing up. And so if Walmart, since Walmart is raising its prices, and if farmers are feeling the heat, that's just a byproduct. That's just an unfortunate byproduct. I mean, you're willing to take those... Uh, consequences with that. The long-term gain of our country standing up to China, who is using this $500 billion surplus to, to build their country, is something that we have to do because we are in a position of strength. We need to stand up to them. It's been unfair trade practices. We know they've been stealing intellectual property to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Chuck Schumer agrees with the president. This is the time where we have to stand up. Our economy is booming right now. What people don't recognize is China's not booming. They are having a struggle right now. This is the perfect time to say to them, let's have fair trade. We're not asking for an, a, a, an imbalance. We're saying, let's be fair. Let's not steal intellectual property. Let's not have currency manipulation. How about you don't subsidize products and then send them into our country and not allow our products into China? So this is a very uh, important step for the president. It shows that he cares about the American people and the long-term future of our economy. Ronna McDaniel, Chairwoman of the RNC, thanks so much for being here. Thanks we'll look forward me. to seeing you in the new place. Thank you.